I was fortunate enough to talk to somebody who actually works with the dogs of Chernobyl, and I've got a lot of cool stuff to share with you. Maybe some of it a little bit depressing. Just in case you're not familiar with what happened in 1986, Earth saw the largest nuclear disaster that has ever happened since. The Chernobyl nuclear facility melted down, and the surrounding communities had to evacuate. Those people were not allowed to bring their pets with them, and they were told that they would be able to come back in three days, but three days never happened. As a result, those pets got out and started living a more feral life. That does include both cats and dogs. Being that they are domestic animals, they started congregating around Chernobyl and ended up being where people are, near the facility that is being guarded. The descendants of those original pets ended up becoming the population that's currently in Chernobyl. The guards developed a special relationship with them. They would feed them leftovers, and they started to see them as companions. Some dogs would have multiple names. They helped relieve boredom, and to a degree they also helped fend off wild animals, because yes, there are wolves out there. Which is also, incidentally, probably why they like to congregate around with people. In 2017, the Clean Futures Fund started working with the doggos. They've been providing basic veterinary care, as well as spaying and neutering services, vaccinations, and feeding them. They lug in 700 kilograms of dog food every week. As for adoption, there was one very special circumstance where four-week-old puppies were allowed to be adopted out. The idea was that they were too young to have been fully contaminated by radiation, and those puppies ended up in various places, but the government has made it clear that that is not going to happen again. It is just too big a risk. There is the concern about radiation leaving the facility and injuring others, as well as the potential for DNA that has been damaged to end up in other populations. Unfortunately, it is very likely that if you see somebody who has claimed to have adopted a Chernobyl puppy, they are lying to you, or they got involved in a scam. And the same goes for abducting one. It is a crime. I've also been told to tell you guys that the research that's being done on them, the way that it looks in the media, is not true. They're not experimenting on the dogs. They take blood, they monitor them, and part of that is going to be seeing how the radiation affects them as well as the population truncation. The people who work with these animals love these animals. Some even gave up research careers to volunteer full-time. What happened when the Ukrainian facilities were held hostage, they also held the workers hostage. During that 30-day period, they were not allowed to feed the dogs. No one was allowed in or out. Some workers were able to give some scraps to them, and others took pictures, which I will not show you here, of the emaciated puppies. And not all of them made it. Even now, that entire area is just locked down because of the war. Workers have to travel as far as 18 hours and take a train to get there to make sure that those puppers get their food. If you really want to adopt a puppy, you can still do a virtual adoption, but it is temporarily on hold. They still have stickers. I donated for Ray. These truly are some absolutely selfless people. And yes, they are getting a substantial amount of pets and being told they are good boys. They are all good boys.